Hello and welcome back my statisticians. We're starting our next chapter, chapter four, which is on probability. Very useful and it's one of the sections and chapters that I really like to do and I hope you enjoy this one too. So we're going to be doing some probability, some counting problems and things like that. Now I gave you a vocabulary sheet to fill out. You'll notice um, some of these slides that we're going to go through, there's not a place for them on your pre-printed notes because you already did the vocabulary and you are familiar with those words, but I'm still going to run through them as I run through the notes today. So our objective today is to determine the sample spaces and find the probability of an event using classical probability or empirical probability. I already talked to you about, well, what's the chance that you, uh, if you pick a day of the week, What's the chance that it's a Wednesday? Most of you are already familiar with the basics of probability, so I'm hoping that this will be an easy section and you'll blow right through it. So let's go through, let's get going. So probability, all that means is a chance of something occurring. Like how probable is it that it's gonna rain today? How probable is it that we're gonna get a snow day on Friday? Ooh, that would be nice. And it's also games of chance, insurance, investments, and weather forecasts. They use probability, like how likely is it that I'd win the lottery? Not very, unfortunately. It is also the basis of inferential statistics. All our predictions are based on probability, and hypotheses are tested by using probability. And uh, probability experiments are chance processes that lead to results called outcomes. Some examples are flipping a coin, rolling a die, drawing a, cord, a card, a cord. Doing an experiment once is called a trial. That's what a trial is. So let's do some events in sample space. We'll call these ex uh, sample space is just a set of all possible outcomes of a probability experiment. And here's some experiments. Toss a coin. The only possible outcomes is that you're going to get a head or a tail. If you toss the coin once, that's also called a trial. Rolling a die. Your outcomes could be the number one, two, three, or four. Answer a true-false question. You only have two outcomes, true or false. That's your sample space. Toss two coins. You could have heads both times, tails both times, a head and a tail, and a tail and a head, because you're going to toss one, then toss the next one. So those are, your, those are your sample spaces. That's all it is. A simple event is just one that has only one outcome. Event is any set of results or outcomes of a probability experiment. Like I said, those are defined on your vocabulary sheet. Don't have to worry about them. Tree diagrams, I think you guys have done these before, but this is the definition of it. It's a picture of the possible outcomes of a procedure shown as line segments emanating from one starting point. These diagrams are sometimes helpful in determining the number of possible outcomes in a sample space. If the number of possibilities is not too large. So that's the definition. It should be on. So this figure summarizes the possible outcomes for a true false question followed by a multiple choice question. You start here with the question, you answer either true or false. So if you answer true, then you've got five choices for the multiple choice. If you answer false, five choices for the multiple choice. And your total possible outcomes are 10. And here's the sample space. The list of all those outcomes is the sample space. Note that there's 10 possible combinations. All right, find the sample space for the gender of the children if a family has three children. So you could have all girls. You could have two girls and a boy, a girl and two boys, a girl followed by a boy followed by a girl, three boys, boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, and boy, girl, girl. Now you can do that in your head and create the sample space. You could also do a tree graph. Now we know there's going to be out possible eight possible outcomes, out possible eight comes. Oh. So we know there's going to be eight possible outcomes in our sample space, but if you get stuck, sometimes a tree diagram can help. So let's look at how this would create a sample set. So if we start out, the first time they have a baby, first child, it could be a boy or a girl, then from there, you could have a boy or a girl, boy or a girl for each of those two possibilities. And then the third event, third child, you'd have a boy or girl for each of those. So when you look, you follow along the leaves of the tree or the branches of the tree. You could have a boy, 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 girl, boy, girl, boy, and so on. So that gives you all your outcomes, your total, pot, your total sample set. 
All right, another one is rolling two dice. Now this one's not on your sheet, but I just wanted you to see how to set up making a sample space for such an endeavor. You have six possibilities for die one, six possibilities for die two. You can, this would be all the possible combinations. I'm not gonna have you write it down, but you get the idea. You could roll a one, then a one, then you could roll a one and a two, and a one and a three, and so on. But you could also go twos across. And these are all your different possible combinations. And if you could set up a table or a grid, that can kind of help you make sure that um, you get all possibilities accounted for. Drawing one card from an ordinary deck of cards, if I'm looking for a sample space, there's 52 cards in a deck. Now you can see why I didn't have you draw this on your notes. It would just take a lot of time and you can see the picture. Here's all the hearts and the diamonds and the spades and the clubs. And you've got from ace to king, there's 13 cards in each suit. So there's 52 possible cards. Three basic interpretations of probability. I kind of call this three basic types of probability. You've got the classical, like Mozart. You've got empirical, which is also using the frequency probability, frequency charts. And you've got the subjective, where you're making um, a prediction and it's, approximate, it's an approximation based on uh, the past probabilities. Capital P denotes probability. A, B, and C, these are the events. So we'd say P of A, like this, it denotes the probability of event A occurring. Sometimes they put words in there like probability drawing a queen from the deck or something like that. Classical probability. This is the one that was invented first. It was the first type studied formally in the 1700s, 1800s. Just like classical music, it was created first, so that's why they call it classical. Use the sample spaces to determine the numerical probability that an event will happen. And it assumes that all outcomes are equally likely to occur. So that's the traits of classical probability. Let's look at the formula. The formula for classical probability is going to be based on how many successes out of the total number of possible outcomes. So assume that a given procedure has n different simple events and each of those simple events has an equal chance of occurring. Notice that's in red. That's important for classical probability. If event A can occur in S of these n ways, then probability of an event occurring equals S over n. I don't like thinking of formulas with these. I like to think of them in words. So I like to think of those as the number of ways that an event can occur over the total number of outcomes in the sample space. When I think basic probability, I like to think number of successes out of total number of trials or total number of possible outcomes. Number of successes, what the event is that you're looking for. All right, so possible values of probability. You know you can't have over 100%. So one is certain, between 0.5 and one is likely, between zero and 0.5 is unlikely, and zero is impossible. That's a nice little picture, I thought it looked good. All right, rounding off probabilities, you round to three significant decimal places or you leave it as an exact fraction. If you say like one out of four or one fourth, most people are familiar with that. But sometimes if you have something like three sixteenths, it might be good to say it's .375 so people have a better idea. They can think of it as a percentage and they can uh, visualize how big that number is. Let's do an example. It says, for a card drawn from an ordinary deck, find the probability of getting a queen. Well, you have to know how many queens there are and how many total cards in the deck that there are. So there's 52 possible cards when you draw a card. There are four queens. So our probability is going to be four out of 52. If I put that in lowest term, that's one out of 13. Now, if it were up to me, I'd probably go ahead and put that as a decimal, but we're going to leave it like this. Your book leaves a lot as fractions. So that's that guy. What about the three children problem? Find the probability that all the children are girls. Well, we know that we had eight possible outcomes in the sample space. Only one of those had three girls. So here was our sample space. One of those was the girls. And so it would be probability of all girls would be one out of eight. That's how we would write it. 
And like I said, it doesn't have to be just one letter. It can be something that signifies. Like I did probability of queen and I did probability GGG, one out of eight. Sometimes that can be um, more descriptive to the reader. It's important to know when you're talking about probability, because they always say this and that, this or that, what the words and and or mean. So and means the event occurs at the same time. So for example, you would draw two car cards. What's the probability of them being a three and a diamond? Something like that. Or has two meanings. It can mean the uh, or if the uh, events occur at the same time. Exclusive is the occur if they don't occur at the same time. So inclusive means you draw two cards at the same time. Exclusive means you draw one card and then you draw another card. Alrighty. So let's do an example of how these work. A card is drawn from an ordinary deck. Find these probabilities. The probabilities of getting a jack, of getting a six of clubs, of getting a three or a diamond, of getting a three or a six. So you can see that you've got some um, ors in there. So let's take a look. The first one's easy. You got four jacks in the deck. Four out of 52 gives you one out of 13. Four jacks out of 52 cards. So probability of a six of clubs, that's very uh, specific. There's only one possibility for that. It has to be a six and a club. So you can um, say there's only one out of that deck that does that. A three or a diamond. This is an example of an inclusive or. A three or a diamond. They could occur at different times. So you have four threes and 13 cards that are diamonds. However, remember you have a three of diamonds, so we had to subtract the one. So we had 16 successes out of a total possible of 52. There's 16 cards that would give us the result we wanted. So we'd say four out of 13 for our lowest terms. The last one is if it's a three or a six. Well, you have four threes in the decks, you have four sixes in the decks, you add those together, so you've got an eight out of 52 possible. So that's where the eight came from. It's two out of 13 in lowest terms. So you always want to put those in lowest terms in the simplest fraction that you can. All right, moving on, basic probability rules. This probably should have been up ahead, up, up before, but it always has to be a decimal number between zero and one. For any event, the probability of A is between 0 and 1 inclusive. So it could be 0, it could be 1, but it cannot be negative or bigger than 1. Rule number 2, if it's impossible, the probability is 0. Number 3, if it's certain to occur, the probability is 1. And fourth, the sum of all the probabilities of a sample space is 1. You have an example to do on your, uh, home, on your note paper about that and I'm going to let you do that one on your own. So I want you to do examples 4.8 and 4.9 on your own to see if you understand those probability problems that we did with the or and the and. And I want you to answer that question where it has you, I believe it is, find the sum of the sample set. So show that the sample set of rolling the dice equals one. So add all up the probabilities of each number and uh, of getting each number of the dice and it should equal out to one. All right, complementary events. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do a part two because I don't wanna make the video too long.